Hi everyone, I'm Laurencio and in this video I'm going to compare what two franchises brought on the PS4. They never had a crossover game on the PS4 like they had the Alien vs Predator movies, but they still have one game each on the platform. And in this video I'm going to compare those two games. Alien Isolation is a masterpiece. It's a survival horror game made as a tribute to the first Alien film that came out in 1979. And Alien Isolation is based on the novel with the same game, written by Keith De Candido. Here you don't play as Alan Ripley, but as Amanda Ripley, Alan's daughter, that oddly enough works on a similar ship as her mom used to. This time the bulk of the action is not happening on a small carrier ship like in the movie, but on a huge space station called Sevastopol. Here, because of an alien outbreak, the ship is devastated. The last survivors have gathered in groups and shoot any human on sight. The androids are defective. The company that bought them was too cheap to pay for some good quality units. So the androids on the ship are malfunctioning and are attacking humans. And while Ripley has to dodge humans and androids, she also has to avoid the alien that caused all of this mayhem. The game has the usual survival horror mechanics, only that this time it is more elegant than your usual horror game. There are no cheap jump scares nor gore, but instead what makes this game a horror game is the tension. You don't want to be seen, especially not by the alien. You have a motion tracker which is handy for keeping an eye on your surroundings and you also have weapons. Though, even if you have weapons, Ripley dies easily, so weapons are usually the last resort, or a strategic move. You won't be running and gunning in the game, you will be running, but you won't gun that much. Actually, you won't be even running, because if you sprint in the game, then the alien will heal you. The alien is bulletproof, so if it sees you, it's game over, as you can't outrun it. But luckily, you can fend off the alien with the flamethrower, if you have enough ammo. Humans are easier to take down. You can take them down with a gun or with a molotov, or you can throw a noisemaker and let the alien keep kill the group. Androids are tougher. You can take them out by hitting them with your wrench, though you will barely have any health after such an encounter. If you don't get killed in the process beforehand, you can shoot them, but they take many bullets to stop functioning. The best option for androids is to outrun them, as they can only walk and can't run. Or you can headshot them multiple times, but outrunning them is the best option. Or you can disable them with an EMP, which brings me to the crafting. In this game you can craft items like medkits to boost your health, or noisemakers that attract the alien in one spot and other items. And I have to praise the AI in the game. Depending on the difficulty you are playing, the alien can be really smart. If you play the game on easy, you just have to watch to not get close to the alien. But in the harder difficulties, and especially on hardcore, the alien has random behavior. It can turn around when walking a corridor, it can even look under the table you are hiding. The alien is random, you can't predict what it's going to do next. Also your motion tracker barely tells you anything on hardcore difficulty. And aside of avoiding enemies in the game, you will also see multiple minigames, whether to unlock doors or hack into systems. And now, the best part of the game is its story and atmosphere. It's incredible on this aspect. The fidelity to the original movie is staggering. The developers did their homework. You can spot minor differences to the movie, it's true, but that will be just nitpicking. The game makes you feel like in 1979. The looks of the technology on board and especially the sounds are very retro and some claim to even have eargasms because of the sounds in the game. I myself admit that the sounds in the game are phenomenal, and so are the looks. I can't say anything bad about the game, 
The only inconvenience I had with the game was that Ripley can't throw objects with an arch. She can only throw straight in front of her. I bullied myself with molotovs quite some times until I realized that Ripley really can throw objects more than a few feet in front of her. But aside of this, the tense action, well written story and amazing graphics and sounds made me fall in love with the game. I totally recommend it to you. I consider it a masterpiece. Predator Hunting Grounds is an online multiplayer game that many people disconsider. They are right that the game gets old after a few hours of gameplay, but luckily the game isn't as bad as the first reviewers got to experience it. In the first versions of the game you had low frame rates and a huge amount of glitches and crashes, now the game is more stable, but it still gets old pretty fast, and since the game is fairly expensive for what it offers, in my opinion, I don't recommend it again. The matches are comprised of 5 people, 4 people are soldiers and one person is the predator. The general idea to win is to stick together, because the predator is overpowered compared to a soldier. But if a predator gets in the crosshair of 4 guns, it's game over for the predator. And what is cool is that the predator even has the option to detonate itself. After the predator is dead, you can wait for someone to pick it up, so the predator doesn't respawn. But the purpose of a match isn't to kill the predator. The game isn't a game of cat and mouse. You and your men have to complete a mission, whether it is to gather intel or plant a bomb, and after you complete your objective, you and your men have to get back to the chopper. In the meantime, the predator is hunting you and your men, so as a soldier you have to fight other humans, do your mission, fend off the predator and get back to the chopper in time. Sounds cool, well, it is. But it gets old after a few hours, especially since you get to see the same jungle. There are only three maps and all of them are in a jungle, so they feel the same. And you can unlock more content, if you're willing to pay for it. So yeah. As for the gameplay, it has a decent amount of depth. There are multiple soldier classes and you can change your loadout and select perks before a match. The weapons aren't that plentiful by number, but they do their job. And as a predator you also get classes and get to customize your loadout. The predator also has the weapons shown in the movie, like the transparent cloak or the laser. You can also imitate human sounds, which is cool. So in conclusion, you could say that the two games complete each other. The first one is a marvelous single player experience I will gladly replay anytime. And the second one is a multiplayer game that gets old but still is fun and which would have been better with more content. That's why I'm saying that the two work well together. I mean, if Hunting Grounds was the multiplayer mode of Alien Isolation, that game, that bundle, would have been more than a masterpiece.